Welcome to the April edition of North St. Paul Notes. I'm your host, Paul Anderson. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk with a couple of members of our police department about community policing and other topics. Stay tuned. North St. Paul Notes is straight ahead. Welcome to the April edition of North St. Paul Notes. We hope this show will keep you up to date on the news and events that are of interest to the residents of North St. Paul. Joining me today in the studio are two members of the North St. Paul Police Department, Officer Amber K. DeCorey and Officer Ray Rosales. Welcome to both of you to the show. Okay. And Thank you. Uh, I know Amber has been on before. That was a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you both are joined the force at about the same time or yep. near the same time. Yeah, about yeah. a day apart. Yeah. Oh, I, is that right? Yeah, that started close. before. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so just just about two years, I think yeah. it was. And and uh, so Amber is the veteran on the program, and Ray, you're kind of the new guy for this program, at least. There so, you go. <laughs> if you'd like. I'll to take that. <laughs> Not as new as you used to be, of course. Um, you and Amber Ray have uh, or did join the police force at about the same time, but tell us a little history of uh, of your uh, time before coming to the North St. Paul Police Department. Um, prior to being sworn in as a, an officer uh, with North St. Paul, I also uh, reserved or volunteered as a reserve officer with the city of North St. Paul um, for three, almost three and a half years. Um, and the reserve program with North St. Paul is quite unique because um, unlike some other um, agencies, North St. Paul is an agency that hires within. So um, by that, uh, we've had several reserve officers during my time and before my time that went either went on to be an officer with North St. Paul. Mm -hmm. um, examples are Officer Joe Allen, um, Officer Turk, um, who's no longer with us, but uh, yeah, he's with another department, um, uh, and several of our several other officers that went on to other agencies, mm -hmm. State Patrol, Maplewood, um, Brooklyn Park. Um, okay. So yeah, that's that's kind of the nice thing about uh, getting involved with the reserve program right. uh, with mm -hmm. North St. Paul. So, okay. And you're from St. <coughs> Paul originally? Originally, yes. Okay. I currently reside in Invergrove Heights with oh, my okay. uh, wife and three beautiful children. Okay. So. Yeah. And my beautiful wife. Okay. <laughs> you can't forget that. <laughs> Amber, what, uh, what, give us a little history of your uh, time before the North St. Paul Police Department. Um, kind of similar to Ray's, I did about seven months as a cadet in another agency. Oh, you, were, also, with, you were also kind of a, in a different agency, they mm -hmm. were called cadets. Is yeah. That a, like, there was a reserves, there's community service officers, and there's mm -hmm. cadets. It just depends on the agency, um, okay. each title brings with it different responsibilities. I also was a reserve officer actually in Stillwater oh. prior to coming mm -hmm. here as well. So uh, it's it's extremely important to kind of have those experiences prior to becoming an officer. So I was sure. actually honored that I got to do those. And me and uh, Ray started in June mm -hmm. of 2014. So okay. we uh, actually kind of went through the whole process together. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So the reserve program is really important for anyone proposing to get into, yes. the, into yeah. the ranks. Yeah, it really prepares um, those folks that are intending on pursuing a law enforcement sure. career. Uh, you get the uh, you get you get to know the daily operations of uh, the police force right. that you're working with, and you get to know how um, how officers train and mm -hmm. operate their equipment. So it's very helpful. Does it sometimes work the opposite way where? People decide after doing that that they this isn't 
Sure what does, they're cut yes. off for. Mm -hmm. Sure does. I imagine there's some who drop yeah. out because of the fact that... Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend, I'm sure Amber would too, that uh, if you are if you are somebody out there that's in um, wishing to pursue a law enforcement career, to look into a reserve program in your city mm -hmm. or a CSO program or mm -hmm. such. Besides that, what kind of training did you have to have before getting into the police, uh, even the reserve program? Did you... Were there some college requirements or uh, technical school requirements that you... For the reserve? For the reserve program, it really is an open... So it's, it's, it's open for anyone. Okay. Um, it's a volunteer program for you, and we do train you when you come in. The mm -hmm. hopes are, like, like he was saying, it was to prepare you for what policing is going to be like, mm -hmm. and it may not be your cup of tea, yeah. and most of the time it is prior to them coming in. As far as becoming an officer, there is, because we're licensed, there right. is additional training. Um, required training. Yeah, yeah, required training that you have to do for the state to approve you before you get oh, your license mm -hmm. through. So there's some schooling that goes along with that. Um, I would say the majority of us have all been in some capacity reserve officers somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go to a skills or police academy, I guess that's the, the right. best yep. description of it. And majority, if not all of us, have our degrees in and variety of backgrounds. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Is this generally a two-year degree that you that you it, go for? Or? Yep. It's a two-year, but North St. Paul actually has a high number of officers who have our four years, and um, I think we have three or four officers right now that are going to be graduating graduating with their four-year degree in the next year to two years. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's unique, I think. Um, sure. But where our agency supports us, and so a lot of officers went back and got their four-year degrees. Okay. So. Well. Yeah, that's interesting because I think a lot of people look at this as a career, but they may not realize what they should do, mm -hmm. what kind of procedure they should follow to get into it and right. to get uh, the appropriate training. Yeah. So that's that's good to know. Um, there are several activities the police department is involved with, I know. Um, one of them is uh, what you called, I think when I talked to Ray earlier, why we talked about uh, community-oriented policing. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what that, that yep. is? Or? Yep. Uh, North St. Paul has adopted the community policing model. Um, and what that is, is it's an uh, interactive process which uh, engages the police officers with uh, the residents, the community, um, the businesses, uh, and visitors. Um, and the plan is to work together collabor collaboratively. Say it. <laughs> Collaboratively? There you Is go. Is that the word? Yeah. <laughs> I like to help my partner out. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for me to say. Collaboratively. <laughs> Collaboratively. Yeah. There you go. Kind of rolled off the tongue nice. <laughs> uh, to develop ways to identify community um, uh, problems or concerns mm -hmm. um, and to determine proper responses to those problems by utilizing um, the department resources um, and other methods. Um, government entities, other mm -hmm. government entities, um, in, in the community itself mm -hmm. um, by uh, assigning officers to um, their community areas. Mm -hmm. um, it basically <coughs> is broken down into 16 areas or sectors and um, I myself have my own area that I uh, get out and engage with the community as does Amber DeCorey, she has her own area um, that she is assigned to and gets out and engages mm -hmm. um, to the community. And what that does is um, is it helps the officers and the citizens build a relationship um, that basically um, builds trust between mm -hmm. the two. Um, and when you have that, when we have that, when we and we develop that relationship, uh, that cooperative relationship, um, it helps uh, the residents feel comfortable coming to the police about um, their concerns or if they identify problems. Um, and it also um, helps us, you know, get out and be more um, community oriented mm -hmm. by engaging with um, the citizens and, you know, just having that cooperative relationship. Sure. So basically that's what, um, that's what our, our community policing is all about is um, building a, a cooperative relationship between mm -hmm. the police officers and and the residents. So, can you add anything to that? Uh, I think Amber? one of the we you know we started about two years ago. We had um, 
I think about five new officers, which really gave us the opportunity to be more out in the community. And we've definitely started a lot of programming with that. In my area specifically, I go to them. I can go to their houses and stop and talk with them. I know mm -hmm. what their kids' names are, what schools sure. their kids go to. And, you know, I know enough to say, well, you know, I noticed yesterday that, you know, this gate was open. I know that she doesn't typically leave her gate open. So those are mm -hmm. some of the things that we get through community policing that we get that relationship. We know who we're dealing with. And a lot of times people don't report a lot of things that happen because they don't want to call 911. Mm -hmm. And with this program, what they can do is they have direct access to that assigned officer. And I've had people call and say, hey, I saw somebody outside yesterday messing with the manhole covers. Mm -hmm. Well, we got that report a couple times, but was never called in and we were able to follow up on it. Sure. And so I think building those relationships, she felt comfortable just giving me an email or leaving me a voicemail and saying, hey, I don't know if this is a problem, but here are yeah. some things that we've been noticing, graffiti or, yeah. you know, kids at the park in the middle of the night. So mm -hmm. I think it's it's really helped us be more of a proactive department versus right. only being a reactive department. So. Right. You talked about having a number to call that isn't a 911 number. that. And I, I've experienced that myself, mm -hmm. and I mentioned this to Ray before, that uh, when I see things happening, mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like, well, this is not a big deal. I don't, mm -hmm. shouldn't have to go through the whole process of 911. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But if you have a number, another number, a non-emergency type number that you can call, with, it's a lot easier in mm -hmm. some ways, but uh, you don't go, you don't start a whole process. And, yeah, I think people that. are afraid to call 911, but I mean, typically we, I tell people, you can call 911. They'll yeah. they'll go ahead and sort out right. if it's an emergency or not. And a lot of times, you might, as a citizen, might not be aware that maybe we have an investigation in regards to what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So even call 911 is not. I know it sounds scary because you're taught don't call 911, right. but if you see something, call. They'll let us know and we can determine if it's something that we need to go out for mm -hmm. or how to follow up. There are non-emergency numbers, but I just think 911 is such an easier thing to remember mm -hmm. than trying That's to find true. the non-emergency yeah. number. But going on our website, there is a number there that will give you, sure. uh, I think it goes to dispatch. Yep. Or, um, and then also, if it's something where you're just like, I'm curious, this is what's going on, you can always call yep. um, North St. Paul Police and Front Desk and mm -hmm. also take those, that information from you as well. Sure. But I, I say, if it's something if something tells you maybe I want to talk to an officer, call 911. You're not going to get in trouble for calling and just saying, here's what's going on. Yep. They'll let us know, and at least I have that information. Mm -hmm. so. And for those folks that, um, that aren't aware of uh, the contact information or who their officer is for their, for their area, for, mm -hmm. the, for their neighborhood, uh, feel free to go to the website, North St. Paul website, click on the, the police link. There's a map on there that has the sectors broke down, and then on the bottom of that map, um, that community partnership mapping is um, the assigned officer and or officers out, and their contact information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. that's yeah. good to know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I know that there are also some community meetings sometimes sponsored by police, and some of those things you might not get involved with much, but. Uh, is there, uh, there, there's not a regular schedule of those thing, of those meetings, I guess, but uh, it's something that the police does when there's a, when there's a need for it. Is that, yeah. is that correct to assume? Yep. Yeah. I think, I think that we've also been trying to encourage um, the community within their groups, their neighborhood groups. We're really trying to push for communities to really establish neighborhood watch groups and neighborhood groups mm -hmm. that we can come to. We can come to your meetings. Um, I know they talked last time about someone was saying that they wanted to do a meeting but didn't really have a place for one. Let us know. We can help coordinate that for sure. you. And we can also do them at the um, City Hall as well. Right. So those are things that we are, those community meetings that we can help sponsor and, mm -hmm. and help with different, not every area obviously has a neighborhood watch. We would love for all of them to have one, but yeah. mm -hmm. so those are things, it's questions on how to start those. Um, we, we had put something previously on the website, but those are questions that we can help answer as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and the, for the, again, uh, just another tip for those folks that have access to the computer, um, reach out uh, to the Facebook, North St. Paul Facebook webpage, yes. and um, the, uh, that page is updated. Uh, quite often with uh, any upcoming events or mm -hmm. uh, maybe you want to just uh, ask a question, um, you know, reach out to the Facebook page and ask it through there and, sure. um, you know, not only will the officers see it, but, you know, everybody that's a member on the link. 
will also see it and have pr probably have some remarks to say. So, so one of the benefits of social media. Yes. Said it. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> that was I a know plug. there aren't. That yeah. was a plug. <laughs> that was a plug. <laughs> there weren't all. They aren't all benefits. But, no, right. that's <laughs> one of them though. <laughs> Uh, I'm just trying to go through some of the things that the police department gets involved with. So mm -hmm. another thing that I was going to mention is the invo involvement at North High. Mm -hmm. And can you mention something about that? We, what did we get a, when did we start going back up there again? About two years ago, we have an SRO. Yep, um, school resource officer. Yeah, officer and Allen, in fact, it went back farther than that. Yeah. Except one year, I think they were, I think Ramsey County took it over, yeah. and mm -hmm. then they decided to go back to yeah. North St. Paul. So. Yes. So we got, we got that back, I want to say 2013, 2014, and, and um, doing a great job. He's up there Monday through Friday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the response time, and just questions. Sometimes people would just have questions and he's needed, you know, just to kind of answer or put out a lot of the fires, but mm -hmm. um, it's been an, a great program. Yep. He's been a positive program, so. Sure. And we have a great guy up there yeah. doing I it. I know so. Joel. And, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Joel, he's a, he's a kidster, man. Yeah. He, he, likes to, he likes to talk to those guys. Yeah. I've had on uh, some of the representatives or some of the officers who have been up there, and, and uh, that reminds me I haven't had Joel, so maybe I should try to get him on the program sometime. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, <laughs> get a little humor involved here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that you um, will. And then, but there are other visits, not just at North High, but uh, you do visit other schools. Mm -hmm. um, recently, yeah, we, well, last month we really kind of kick-started. I think, you know, Officer Allen is a lot at the high school, and, and sometimes it's really hard for him to really go to the other schools that we have sure. in North St. Paul. So a lot of the officers have kicked in their time coming mm -hmm. in when they're not scheduled or even trying to do it when we're scheduled. And we've been reading um, primarily to, I want to say, first kindergarten and first graders. Yep. But we okay. uh, got a lot of requests last month for even fourth grade classes. They said, you know, we're not a second grade class, so we'd love to have an officer out. Well, they love to do it. So we had... I don't even know how many visits we had last month. I want to say about six officers went out mm -hmm. a couple times oh, last month. Okay. Um, hmm. Half Price Book actually donated books for us to read to the kids as well. So we've had some community people yeah. step up and, and help us out with donating books and, and, and time for us as well. So Any particular subjects on those books? or No, I, I think, you know, I always like to read books to kids that have to do with policing, yeah. but sometimes it's whatever the topic was. Obviously, last month was February, so... We did some a lot of um, uh, books on yeah. <laughs> on puppy love and stuff like yeah. that, but it was a blast. The kids got to ask questions, and obviously we know what questions are coming afterwards, and we got asked back. So we decided to continue the program, so we'll be doing this until the end of the year, and we'll be bringing it back for the full year next year. So um, if teachers have not heard about it or have questions, they can contact us, and sure. we'll send somebody out to your classroom and, and read. And, uh, or even just do a presentation on what we yep. do as well. So it had, really has several benefits mm -hmm. to, to the program. Yep. I mean, just getting acquainted with kids and letting them know right. that you're human. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's another expansion onto our community policing efforts yes. sure. um, to get out there and engage with right. all ages. Mm -hmm. Another annual big event is the uh, National Night Out. Mm -hmm. And that uh, attracts quite a, quite a crowd, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, and that uh, I can imagine that it becomes quite a challenge to cover all bases. They we manage to do it pretty well. I think what we try to do is, you know, one of the things we've asked for citizens to do is, if you're doing an event in your in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. to let us know and register. That helps us kind of map out who you know, yep, kind right. of get a better map of going this way and then down this way. And mm -hmm. um, we really try to have, if you're registered we're going to try to get someone there. Yeah. Um, and so it's harder for us when people don't register because then we're like, oh, we didn't know that was there. So sure. we encourage everybody, let us know that you're having something, we will stop by. Okay. So. And then uh, uh, I imagine that the, the officers who represent a certain area would try to go to those areas. Yes. Correct, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's an opportunity for the officers um, to to go to other neighborhoods that mm -hmm. you know that they're not assigned to, or other sectors mm -hmm. that they're not assigned to, and get get to know other other residents. Sure. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, this year the National Night Out event is on Tuesday, August second. So that'll be something that you mm -hmm. will both be involved at, yeah. with yeah. On, at that time. And then there is another event that uh, is coming up soon. Um, I should say soon is a couple months, I guess, but. Uh, there will be an open house on Friday, June 3rd, mm -hmm. 
between six and nine is yep. what what yeah happens? bring the uh, bring the kids and family down it's um, I think I believe last year we had the uh, the hot dogs out mm -hmm. and we had uh, food and sodas and water um, but it's at City Hall mm -hmm. um, and the fire uh, the fire department brings out all their equipment right. and uh, mm -hmm. the ladder truck and let the kids and families explore the equipment and our SWAT um, team brings out their equipment and mm -hmm. um, it's all parked on the south side of the building in the parking lot there. We bring out our squads and we let the kids uh, roam through the squads and get to uh, see how they, all the equipment inside the squads. Mm -hmm. um, we have our mountain bike um, unit that I'm a part of and we have our motorcycle unit. Um, that We're going to talk Fredericks. about that a little yep. bit later. So. Uh, and Officer Fredericks brings out his motorcycle and uh, okay. shows the kids that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, basically another community policing event that um, we get to know the residents through mm -hmm. letting them let their kids come and see all the equipment. So I think that was last year, wasn't that the first night of the uh, car, car show? show? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So that coordinated. This is the second annual. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's that's a good good timing, I think. Yep. And yeah. Gives you an opportunity to get a big crowd that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you feel like hot dogs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and our car show has been just having amazing success. That every, is every year. It's just getting bigger and bigger. That is amazing. Yeah. Really. All that's grown. Yeah. And accepted by most people at least and it's a good event it's a good family event mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. yeah um in august there's another uh fishing with cops event i think mm -hmm. isn't that what it's called fishing with cops or fish with a cop yeah yeah right <laughs> um last year was i think our first uh attempt yeah. at it um but um yeah we we have the dnr they loan us a big trailer that's full of equipment and um there's no fees or nothing. Kids, kids, and families come down. Just and invited to come. And as of right now, we don't have a date set, but um, mm -hmm. uh, folks can continue to check our website and check our Facebook uh, for a date that uh, will probably be in the next couple months. Here, I would uh, I would believe once the weather gets a little nicer. Right. So, uh, but yeah, they, there's no fees or n nothing like that. They come down and uh, fishing poles, bait, all mm -hmm. the gear is there and. Uh, that's again. That's loaned to us by the DNR. So, Did, was that pretty well attended last year? Uh, we had a pretty decent yeah. turnout for. Were both uh, of you involved with that last year? Or? I think you and. Um, I, yep, I was supposed to be, and <laughs> oh, okay. I, I actually I ended up having to work that day, and okay. um, we got quite busy. Which so happens. <laughs> Officer yeah. Barnes, uh, he uh, he directed and coordinated that yeah. event. Okay. So uh, up at Silver Lake. Yeah, at the south, at the mm. pier or yep. near the pier. Uh, mm -hmm. Right on, on the, the shoreline shore. too. Yep. Right. Okay. So, well, that's that's kind of a nice event. I think I saw the crowds yep. over there, and, yeah. and uh, it was a well attended. Good so, deal. Uh, this is something I don't think I discussed with you at all. But there is something about practicing house safety. Is that something that you yep. are aware of, or uh, yep. can talk it's about? The, the warmer weather is coming upon us, and mm -hmm. uh, folks uh, now get up to their cabin a, little, a lot more often. Um, they leave their windows open a lot more right, often, right. Um, screen doors, uh, so um, houses tend to get unlocked or yes. left unlocked right. um, when they leave. Um, some pointers are just make sure, um, you know, if you're going to leave the house, if you're going to open windows, uh, don't take the chance. Close the windows, close them up before you leave. Um, uh, some other tips are if you, if you have garage door openers in your vehicles and you park your vehicles out in the driveway at night. <laughs> Um, you know, make sure you take the garage door openers out because if your car gets uh, broken into and they get the garage door opener and you don't realize it several days later, now your garage door is open and your house is broken into. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so um, some things you can do to prevent um, things from happening to your home are get some decals. You can go to your local hardware store and get some decals that say security or beware of dog. Mm -hmm. um, just as a d deterrence, um, mm -hmm. post those up in your front yard or post them up on your front windows. Um, another thing is um, a lot of times folks, I'm, I'm guilty myself, is you walk, in your, you walk in your front door or your garage door and right there are your keys hanging up for your house <laughs> and your car. Um, snatch the keys after they get in your house and there's your car in the garage. Uh, so uh, tend to put your keys, if you can, in a separate place, or a place away from the front door or the back door or any entrance. Um, also, people like to have bonfires during the summer. Um, 
try not to stack any wood up around the house because mm -hmm. all it all ends up being is uh, a stepping tool for folks to get in, burglars to get sure. into your house. So, um, Officer DeCore, you got any other tips? <laughs> I was hoping you were going to go through the whole list. I, agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can throw a couple in there. I guess one of the things with the bonfires as well is that people will do the bonfires and leave their front door unlocked because mm -hmm. they're waiting for guests to come mm -hmm. in and we uh, encourage people. I know it's not a natural thing to do. It's summertime, you wanna have your front door, your sliding glass door open, but if you're outside gardening and your front door's unlocked, mm -hmm. you're not gonna hear someone come in. Um, so just making sure that you change your habits during the, the, as it gets warmer, and we're so excited that the sun's coming out and that right. we get to be outside and have that fresh air, but um, it's very easy to cut at night. People like to leave their windows cracked. Mm -hmm. Most windows have stoppers in them, engage those stoppers so the window can't be open any further than that. So. Okay. Those are some tips that we well, Those encourage. are all good tips. Uh, surprisingly, we're almost out of time, and so I want to make sure we get into the bike patrol yeah. before we run yeah. out of time. So can you talk about that a I little sure bit? Can. And I sure can. We just have a, about three minutes left. Okay. So, uh, uh, the bike patrol um, in North St. Paul is a new division, new, new unit, um, where I myself and Officer Lee, my one of our partner, uh, we were trained, uh, took an intensive training course um, last year, and... Um, Basically what the bike patrol does is um, it allows us to engage with the community uh, in other ways that we can't in, while we're in our squad car. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to be able to out on the bike and uh, you know, you approach people and they're like, whoa, that's a cop. Mm -hmm. You don't expect a cop to be on a bike. That's right, um, yeah. But it does give us the opportunity to go into other places, down alleys or through yards that uh, our squad car can't go through. But um, so, it's it's a uh, it's a nice addition to sure. the, the uh, police department. And there's also going to be a bike rodeo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it last year. Um, we did it at the police station. We got a nice turnout, and once again, we had a lot of community sponsors. Target um, sponsored um, Sam's Club, and we were able to mm -hmm. the kids rate raffled off two bikes um, and a lot of other accessories at the time. And they went through a bike course, and we had. Um, Officer Rosales was able to come out, and so was Officer Freddy with uh, the bike and the motorcycle. So we're hoping to do that again this year. Yeah. Um, we have a tentative date of May 21st. Um, please follow the Facebook page, and we'll, and we'll make sure you get the correct date on there if we have to change it in times, and hopefully get flyers out to the schools so the kids can come, and that's geared for usually children, um, again, in that kindergarten and first, second grade age group to kind of teach them the proper bike signals, helmets, and safety mm -hmm. as well. You so. both feel that helmets are important? Extremely. I do especially. Yeah. We both have, our, we, I both have children. Um, mm -hmm. He's got three and I have three and it's one of the things that we do and I'm sure our kids are like, oh, you're a cop, you're making us wear helmets. Yeah. But it's, yeah. you know, because we are officers, we understand the dangers of not wearing helmets. So sure. right. definitely push that. Yeah, you get some experiences that reinforces that, yes. uh, mm -hmm. that feeling, I'm sure. Um, I know that there are other things, many other things that police do in North St. Paul, um, uh, including uh, enforcing some of the ordinances and uh, you certainly can't get at everything but uh, I, I realize that there are some things that just are beyond your control. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of ordinances of course that are that are ignored by people mm -hmm. and that's unfortunately mm -hmm. um, the case. Yeah. Uh, one that we had talked about was this crossing over the center line on 7th Avenue and, uh, yep. yeah. and how many people do that even taking though there are signs the out. Taking the turn, they'll, yeah. they'll make that turn right in front of a sign. Sure, well. or, or in front of an officer. <laughs> or in front of an officer too, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it's always been my, a pet peeve of mine when mm -hmm. I see that, that kind of thing happening. So yeah. it's, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to mention that we haven't had time for yet? I think on the thing for ordinance, so one of the ordinance I would love for people to kind of take a minute to read uh, is the um, bonfire one as yep. well. I think most cities, it varies where you, where you live at. North St. Paul, we have sure. a time and we have a size and mm -hmm. we have what you can burn. And so just spending maybe a couple of minutes going over the North St. Paul, they do change sometimes. Yes. Um, there's so many for us that we have to keep track of them, but yeah. just maybe it's summertime, checking those different burning ordinance, checking yep. Like you said, that left turn is a big one for yep. people and, and just sure. reminding them that, you know, um, yeah. we do tag good, for those. So <laughs> good, good thing to mention. Yeah. Uh, we are actually out of time now. So um, I want to thank both of you for thank you for having us yeah, on, on, on the program. Uh, we've been talking to officers Amber K. DeCorey and Ray Ros Rosales, uh, who um, are members of the North St. Paul Police Department. 
And because we're out of time, we ask you to join us next month when we'll bring you more news about North St. Paul. I'm Paul Anderson speaking for everyone at the City of North St. Paul. Thank you for watching.